Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. You are indeed. My name is Marshall St. Patrick here at one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Welcome back for another quick episode, another quick roundup. I'm going to try and do a short one today. I'm going to, um, <laughs> I always say I'm going to do a short one, but now I'm going to trial something today. I'm going to try and do a video in under 10 minutes um, and just see how that kind of goes down with the crowd, you know? So rather than me do the long intro, they would, I mean, like, normally I would do, you know, by now you should know where to support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. If you don't know, look at the ticker tape below. But this one specifically on the West Indies women's side. Um, I'm mindful of the fact that I haven't dropped any content on them in a while. Obviously on our social media handles, we've been talking about them, kind of watching the games, updating, so on and so forth. But I want to kind of read this out so this was the post-match media press conference after the West Indies women's sixth uh, wicket defeat to India in their second match which just virtually knocked us out of the World Cup Shakira Selman said two games in a row our opening bowlers did not start well and that put us on the back foot early we should have started better because we bowled second and would have seen how the pitch played in the first innings Stefani played a brilliant knock in only her second match this year but she is a senior player and showed that today. If we continue playing like we are, we are not going to win many games. We aren't batting well, and there's not much time until the next match. We know Ireland will be coming at us, so we know we will have to step up. I do wonder, though, if Shakira actually meant we aren't bowling well, because in reality, in the first two matches of this tournament, and if you watched my video pre the World Cup, when I looked at the chances of the women's uh, getting out of their group, in, in this World Cup, I said it was pretty much slim to none, right? Because of the gap between us and India and England, and that gap has got wider and wider. But if you actually look at the first match we played against England, we made 135 for seven from our 20 overs, which wasn't enough on that pitch. But in the context of the last of the preceding 13 matches before that innings, that was one of our highest totals in the 13 straight defeats we had had at that point in time. Against India, we posted 118 for six. That never looked like being enough either. But again, in the context of by then the preceding 14 matches and 14 straight defeats, that was actually higher than significantly higher than the majority of our innings in those 14 straight defeats. As a result of our defeat to India in the second World Cup game, our second World Cup game, the West Indies women have now lost 15 games in a row. 15. Now, I would, I would venture and say that it doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're playing teams out of your that you're out of your depth against. So in terms of the tri series, we played a tri series against India and South Africa. Before that, we played a five match series versus England. Uh, we've had to play England and India again in this World Cup, and then before that, we've played New Zealand. It really doesn't matter who you play in any in any language. Fifteen straight defeats isn't good enough. But I'm, I'm not necessarily here to dig out the West Indies women's side because, like I say, nothing's happened that I didn't expect to happen, so I feel like I can't just dig them out. But fundamentally for me and what this kind of short episode is about, I'm actually putting this back on those who watch this video. What can we do? What should we do? And what is realistically possible? Do we just have to, this is my take, suck it up? And just accept it. It is what it is. Uh, I said this before the World Cup and I say it again. Based on where the West Indies women's side is in their development and their transition, this is probably about as good as it gets. However, we have some challenges that await. At the time of recording this, so tomorrow, is so today is the 16th of February. Tomorrow, we play Ireland women at five o'clock UK time. So for most of you in the Caribbean, that'll be one o'clock or midday, right? To lose to them, if, sorry, if we lost to them, and if that became 16 straight defeats in a row, then I think serious, hard, 
difficult questions would have to be asked about what's going on in the in the backroom setup. Up till now, I've always said that Courtney's just doing the best of what he can do, given where the, the kind of women's team is at. But dare I say that a defeat to Ireland women would actually be seen as unacceptable? Dare I say that? Where do you all stand on that crowd? Let me know where you stand on that. Dare I say that if we leave this World Cup without beating Ireland, and possibly even you could argue if we don't beat Pakistan, although I think that actually Pakistan may well go into that game as favourites as well. But with two games to go in this World Cup, what's the bar now, people? England and India was, was expected defeats, certainly where I'm concerned. What do you expect against Ireland and Pakistan? So that's the first, that's one of the first questions I'd like people to answer in the comments below. But also, on top of that, when we look at this England and 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 injured performance, Shakira Selman said we haven't played well. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't. Because nothing playing well means that we turn up in all three suits of the game. So fielding, batting, and bowling. In the first game against England, I thought we turned did I think we turned up in half of those suits. In half of one suit, sorry. When we post 130, it wasn't par, but it was better than what we usually do. Against India, I actually thought our fielding, I thought our ground fielding was good against India, but 118 was never going to be enough. But even with it not being enough, I thought some of our bowlers bowled poorly. And again, I just have to, so if I, actually, let me read, let me read it out for people. Against India, uh, Shamila Connell, two overs, none for 27. Chanel Henry, three overs, one for 21. I think that's fair. Haley Matthews and Karishma Ram, uh, Ramarat were brilliant. Um, Haley, four overs, one for 12. Uh, Karishma, uh, four overs, two for 14. Then Afi, two overs, none for 24. Shakira Selman, two overs, none for 11. And Shabika Gajanabi, one over, none for 10. There's just a question mark with our bowling as to have we got the bowlers to challenge and are we managing our bowling loads appropriately? So someone like a Shakira Selman has bowled four overs in the tournament. Against England, she bowled two overs, none for 14. Against India, she bowled two overs, none for 11. Are we utilising our bowling resources appropriately? Again, crowd, that's for you to get back at me in the comments below. Are we, is this just the best that we can do? Or are we underutilising the resources we've got available? Um, Shamila Connell, I think, has been poor across both games, she, but she's also one of our senior bowlers. What do we do in that situation? Um, Hayley Matthews was poor in the first game, but you excuse Hayley Matthews, she turned up with the bat in the first game. She might have been poor with the ball, but she got 42 of 32. He, and, we, and we have to give flowers to Stefani Taylor. Stefani Taylor, as Shakira Selman said, only her second game this year. She's basically been out injured all year in essence, for the West Indies, or for the, yeah, she basically, she'd been injured all year, certainly, obviously, we've only been January and February, but she's been injured for the longest while, I should say, and yet still, she showed her class, 42 or 40 balls against India, and Stefani's ability to anchor the innings allowed someone like a Shemaine Campbell to come in, a Chadine Nation to come in later and hit some runs, and Shabika Gajanabi to come in and hit some runs, it's just a shame that Haley didn't get off in the India game because technically the best bet that it, that West Indies have is that Stefani and Haley both get off in a match. That's effectively the best bet they've got because, as people have to understand, we have lost two of our world-class players. DeAndre Dotting obviously has retired and Nisa Mohammed has taken a break, a six-month six sabbatical from West Indies women's duty. So it has significantly weakened the side. The challenge I put to everybody uh, listening to this is, I guess the challenge is, so what now? What now? Let me pose three or two particular scenarios. If we beat Ireland and Pakistan, and obviously we'll, we, we'll be out of the tournament still, do we look at that and say, fair, we beat who we, was, who we should have been expecting to beat and we lost against who we expected to lose to. So do we just say, fair, we continue the development? If we lose one of those games to Ireland and Pakistan, and only if we win one and lose one, what is the scenario then? Do we say that the women have underachieved in the tournament? And does that then pose question marks about the direction of the women's team under Courtney Walsh? And then the third scenario is forget winning, losing, forget who we beat, who we don't beat. 
is this just what it is? It, it does this require any deep and meaningful further analysis um, and and kind of deep dive to say what about this and what's going wrong with that and where do we go from here? Do we just have to accept that when your team is in transition, this is what it is? Or is there a specific cutoff point that you reach where you say, no, that's not good enough? Which questions still need to be asked? So I, I like I say, I, I kind of put that to everybody. I put that to everybody listening. And I do just leave you with this caveat. Do remember that the West Indies Academy for the women does start this year, later on this year. And with that, surely will be the next 12, 10, 11 um, uh, ladies players who are going to form part of the next generation of the uh, of the Western women's West Indies women's side, the foundation, so to speak. So that means your Zaida James. That means your Trishan Holder and so on and so forth. So that's why I kind of left you with that third caveat. Do we just have to chalk this up as what's happened is what we expected to happen? This is all part of the process. We got to trust the process with Courtney and we just got to understand that sometimes you got to go through the rough to find the smooth later on. And if it means we've got to go 16 straight defeats or 17 straight defeats, so be it. Or do you, those who are listening to this, do you have a cutoff point where you say, nah, nah, this actually isn't good enough and something's got to be done? After the men's T20 side got knocked out of the 2022 um, T20 World Cup, an independent review was carried out. Let me just say this. What if West Indies women lost to Ireland women and lost to Pakistan women and we left the World Cup with no wins? Would Cricket West Indies then do an independent report into what's going wrong with the West Indies women's side? Or would we say this is just part of the process? Get at me in the comments below, people. This is probably one of the quickest videos I've ever done. I'm trying something new. I just want to want to try a new style for some of the videos going forward. And this is this is kind of like the first practice of it. So get at me in the comments below. Like, share and subscribe um, to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. We're on the road to 5K on YouTube. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at Carib Cricket. Find us on Facebook. Um, just search Caribbean Cricket Podcast. And like I always say, if you want to support the podcast and be, become part of the movement and support us financially to help us keep keep doing what we do, www.patreon.com forward slash Carib Cricket. Every little bit helps us go a long way. Thank you very much as usual for listening, people. Stay locked in for more content on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Peace. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Things coming. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans.